Now I've thought about this for quite some time and I said to myself, can you imagine what this kind of an interaction would be like to see Moro actually meet Granola and not for nothing, I think what I might do on this video is I might rant. So check this out, right? So we have Moro and we have Granola. Now I know a lot of people are going to say, well, in this case, you know, Granola would be stronger than Moro because of the wish that he made, but not for nothing, I firmly believe that in my own opinion, Moro is not only a better antagonist, this is not good, oh crap, I have to survive right now just in case you guys don't know I'm playing as Moro, but at the same time, not only is Moro a better antagonist, but there was more of a reason to believe that our heroes were in legitimate danger when this guy was around, right? He posed such an interesting threat because he hated the concept of peace. He didn't just want to become the quote, strongest, right? He just wanted to eradicate all life within the universe. And I think that the overall narrative there is a brilliant one. Whereas Granola, he wanted revenge on the Saiyans, which was fine. And then we saw how his quest for wanting to kill Frieza was a thing. And then just out of nowhere, he uses these two little rinky ding Dragon Balls to just make this wish to become the strongest. And that's all she wrote. And then we got, you know, Gas making the wish, or at least Elect making the wish for him. And then he was the so-called strongest for a little bit. It was so redundant. But what I wanted to ask you guys is fan manga concept? Should we do it? Moro versus Granola? In my own opinion, I'm just gonna flat out say if we were to do this, I'm having it to where Moro is going to get the better of Granola. Why? Let's just say, because I firmly do believe that Granola could effortlessly beat him unless Moro gets behind him, grabs him, copies his power, does something of the sorts, and then we have a problem because not only would Moro then become even stronger than what he just was a few seconds ago, but I think that the way Granola could win is by vital point, you know, pressure point strikes, the sniper ability that he has, and Moro is a walking hack. We saw that, uh-oh, did he just activate Ultra Instinct? That's not good. We're gonna have to try to figure out a way how to stop this guy. Oh, he's pretty quick right now. This is not good. So, like I was saying, I think that if Granola targets his pressure points, I think that if he were just to try to kill him off the gate, would that be a situation to where Moro could lose? But at the same time, I just don't like Granola's premise. I felt like the way Moro was introduced, even when he became Moro 7-3 and he lost like those animalistic features to him, the snout, the teeth and all that stuff, like he became more of a human. It was more, I guess, acceptable per se than, you know, what we saw go down with Granola because Granola was going to off himself. We had this whole gig with Monaito. This isn't good. I mean, but make no mistake about it. I think that Granola would smash this dude in a one-on-one -on -one fight between full power Moro and full power Granola. Granola takes the cake and am I gonna live or die here? Okay, I'm alive. Unless of course again We see Moro kind of copy him. It's game over because when he copied Maris He was able to then rival MUI Goku who which before he wasn't able to do that He was just getting destroyed. You know what I mean? So I just think that with what's going on in the Dragon Ball Super manga the granola arc could have been that much more better I think and the narrative could have been more flushed out all of these things could have been a bit better just like the moral story right the moral story wasn't the perfect story but jesus christ it was in my opinion at least a lot better than granola the only thing that the granola story offered that was good was the idea of wanting revenge on the saiyans and then kind of telling the story of the Sorellians and telling the story about how the heaters had lied to granola but at the same time everything was so predictable Whereas in the Moro story, everything essentially to an extent was unpredictable because you didn't know what was going to happen with the guy Kaio. You didn't know what was going to happen when Moro came to Earth. You didn't know what was going to happen once they ended up fighting this guy for like the seventh time because each and every single time they fought this dude, they got the shit beat out of them. So that's why I prefer Moro that much more over Granola is because Moro got the job done and I guess you could say he did it more than once. The only problem is that he let them live, whereas Granola, the reason why I like him, was because he wanted to end the Saiyans the way they did, right? So I'm going to be doing sprite animations for this because I think it's pretty cool, especially, and I really want you guys to stop and think about this, right? If Moro somehow was able to get behind Granola and copy him, grab him by the back of the neck, and mimic everything he has, can you imagine Moro wielding the ability to use Hakai or even wielding the ability to use all of these pressure point strikes and all of these like, you know, assassination abilities. It's crazy talk, you know what I mean? So that's why, in my opinion, Moro, to me, is better than Granola. I think that Granola, you know, as as someone that was in between, as like an anti-hero, he's okay. 
But when we're talking about being like an opposition to Goku and Vegeta, yeah, he, you know, he was made out to be like this Sorellian assassin sniper dude. He, oh, that was a pretty good, that was a pretty good uh, dodge right there. If I didn't dodge that, that would have been trouble. This is actually a really close fight, by the way. My, my, my palms are getting very sweaty just by, you know, trying my best to beat this dude. But either way, you know, Granola came off like the type of person that he didn't know what he was doing. Whereas Moro knew what he was doing, you know what I mean? Especially when he used Vegeta's own Big Bang against him. He literally looked at Vegeta and said, you know, this is just an ordinary key blast. Like, what's so special about this? So, I don't know. But in terms of a fan manga, let me know who should win, Granola or Moro. And for a sprite fight, who should win, Granola or Moro. And I'm going to do that on my main channel just to see where it goes. Uh, I, think, I think going forward, I might do more alternatives because I feel like a lot of these alternate kind of what if stories are pretty fun and they're creative not not everyone you know is creative in this fandom to come up with their own shit and for it to make sense and for it to be appealing to everybody not saying that mine is always going to appeal to everybody but i love the what if stuff i think it's really fun so in the comment section below who do you think would win in a one-on-one -on -one fight between a bloodlustful full-powered moro and a bloodlustful full-powered granola because obviously the two guys are different they fight different their approach is different their stories are different but right now for me the only thing i care about is whooping this dude because you could be the last Sorellian or not i'm either gonna copy you or i'm gonna eat you just straight up like that you know what i mean oh boy all right so he's activating his little ultra instinct power which again you have to consider moro's ability to copy and to do what you know essentially he did to maris yeah and which was terrifying enough but also at the same time it becomes a problem of am i gonna live right now it becomes a problem of will he be able to sustain that kind of a power you know what i mean and i don't think he i mean there should be a, a problem for him not to this is going to be a really close fight holy crap let me know in the comment section below guys i'm always open to ideas for sprite fights and just it could be whatever it could be 2v2s one-on-ones one on two three on one you know stuff like that wow we actually got the victory oh we got the victory so goes the last known sorellian warrior